On this worksheet, we're gonna practice doing some reactions at the benzylic position. As a reminder, the benzylic position is the carbon atom that is attached directly to a benzene ring. So like this carbon atom right here is benzylic. Looking at the first reaction, what I can see is that we're not making any changes to the carbon skeleton, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, we are trying to add a functional group to the benzylic position. There isn't a functional group already present. Whenever you have a molecule like this where there is no functionality, the very first thing that you need to do is introduce functionality. That we do using a free radical bromination or free radical halogenation. So I'm gonna use Br2 with light. And in that step, that's gonna put a bromine right here on the in the benzylic site. Once I get the bromine there, this molecule is much more reactive. I want to substitute the bromine with an OH group. This is a, a tertiary alkyl halide, so I could do this using an SN1 reaction. Reagents that would be appropriate for an SN1 reaction would just be something like H2O with like maybe a little bit of acid catalyst to help it along. Uh, and that would give us this product right here. There is more than one way to do this transformation, so this is just the method that I chose. If you've come up with something different, there's a pretty good chance that it's accurate, that it's correct. So here's a pretty similar problem. Uh, again, we have no functionality at that benzylic site, so the first thing that I need to do is a free radical bromination, bromine with light, and that's gonna put uh, a bromine right here in the benzylic site. And then the next step, what I'm trying to do is an elimination reaction. I wanna get a carbon-carbon double bond in this position. So I just need to use some sort of strong base like methoxide would work really well uh, and give me that al alkene. And again, there's gonna be more than one way to do this. Um, that's just the method that I've chosen. So for uh, this next one, Let's, it's a little bit tricky. I have a little bit of a, uh, like a hard time when I'm dealing with cyanide, cyano groups, because we do technically add a carbon from the cyanide group, but it's not the same as increasing the carbon chain. Like we don't need to use a Grignard reaction or something. We can just use the cyanide ion because it's part of this carbon nitrogen triple bond. So this one is, I think is actually gonna be pretty straightforward. Again, we do need to start by adding a halogen. I'm gonna use something different this time. I'm gonna use NBS with light, works the same way. That's gonna put a bromine right here. And then I can just do a SN2 reaction, a substitution reaction using the cyanide ion as my nucleophile. That's gonna give us the product. Now in this next one, we are increasing the carbon chain. So we've got one carbon, uh, one benzylic carbon, and then in our product, we've got another carbon that's been added. So this one is gonna be a little bit more complicated. I do still need to start by putting functionality on this molecule. And this one, because it's a little trickier, I'm actually gonna draw, draw the products that we're making over here. So in the first step, when we use NBS, that's gonna give us this halogenated molecule. And then I think what I'm gonna to choose to do is a Grignard reaction. And again, there's, there's probably more than one way to do this, but I'm gonna to choose to do a Grignard reaction. So my next step is going to be to synthesize the Grignard. That's gonna be with magnesium in ether. And that's going to give me this molecule right here, MgBr. And then what I need to do is add just one single carbon atom with a Grignard reaction. So I need a ketone that has, or an aldehyde that has just one carbon atom in it. And that is going to be the tiniest little one, the formaldehyde molecule. That little tiny formaldehyde molecule is going to give me Trying to squeeze this in here. One more carbon atom with an O minus. I am going to want to follow that up with some water so that I can get an alcohol over here like this. And now I am ready to do my elimination reaction with um, acid catalyzed dehydration would be my favorite reaction and that would put a carbon-carbon double bond in this position. I'm gonna need to scoot all of this up a little bit. 
So my last step is just going to be something like H2SO4, or actually I think we normally use H3O plus with a little bit of water. That will give me the alk alkene, styrene. And let's take a look at our next reactions. This one actually um, is kind of the opposite. We are changing the carbon skeleton, but we're decreasing it. So we're taking a carbon away. We're getting rid of that carbon that I did not put a number on in the reactant. Um, the best way for us to do that would be with ozonolysis. We wanna do an ozonolysis reaction and ozonolysis is a reaction that takes place with alkenes. So what I want to do initially is convert this molecule to an alkene. First thing I need to do, of course, is put a leaving group or put a, a halogen, put some functionality on this molecule. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is an elimination reaction. I'm gonna use methoxide. That's a really good base for elimination. And that's gonna give me an alkene. It'll be like a, a E1 reactions, I probably shouldn't use methoxide since it's an E1 reaction. I should probably use a weaker base. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as methoxide. And then once I have the alkene, in the last step, I can just do my ozonolysis, O3, with DMS. We have one more to go. It looks like, again, we have another change to our carbon skeleton. We're gonna need to increase the carbon chain by a few carbon atoms. This one might take a few steps. We're also introducing an alcohol. Very first thing that we should do is put halogen on there. I'm gonna go back to using my bromine, Br2, with light. And that is going to give me this molecule right here. And I like I might be tempted, you might be tempted to just jump straight to a Grignard reaction like we did up here. But if we jump straight to a Grignard reaction, the carbon skeleton is going to increase in this position right here. And we actually need our carbon skeleton to increase this way. So we can't jump straight to a Grignard reaction. What we actually need to do is um, like move this halogen out to the end of the carbon chain. So I am going to do that with an elimination reaction. I'm going to start by using methoxide and moving that double bond like this. And then I'm going to follow that up. I mean, there's, there's a few different things that we could do at this point. But I'm going to follow that up by doing an anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr. And that's going to put the bromine on the end of the double bond like that. Now I feel equipped to do the Grignard reaction. I feel ready to do the Grignard reaction. So I'm gonna turn this into a Grignard magnesium with ether and it's gonna give me this guy right here. And that's carbon one and two. And now I'm going to lengthen the carbon skeleton I need two more carbon atoms, and I need them in a, like an aldehyde or a ketone. So there's gonna be carbon, this is gonna be carbon number three, and there's gonna be carbon number four, like that. And that will give me, this is a pretty tricky synthesis. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, three, four. And my OH group is going to end up on carbon number three, which is definitely not where I want it. I've got to move it quite a bit. It's going to take me a few steps to get this OH group moved. And as I'm doing this reaction, I'm feeling like there's probably a faster way for all of this to be done. But I'm already committed at this point, so I'm just going to keep going with it. I'm going to do an acid catalyzed dehydration of an alcohol that will give me an alkene. That's going to remove this OH group and put the double bond in between carbons two and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, and I'm still, not, I'm still not done yet because I need my OH group here. So I need to add another functional group. I don't really want to add an alcohol because I'm just going to have to take it off. So I'm going to add, let's say I'm going to add HBr 
there isn't anything to help direct the hydrogen and the bromine in this reaction, which means that some of the bromines in the HBr will be added to carbon number two. Some of them will be added to carbon number three. I don't care about the ones that are added to carbon number three. So I just want to show the ones that are being added to carbon number two. One, two, three, four. And then um, this still isn't where I want my bromine to be or my leaving or my OH group to be. So I'm gonna need to do another elimination reaction. Um, this time I'm gonna do a um, methoxide elimination since I have a good leaving group. I've got the bromine and that is going to move my double bond in between carbons one and two. I feel like there's definitely a faster way to do this. <laughs> Uh, now that I'm here, my last step, I can do an addition of water. We've got a lot of different reagents that we could do to add water, um, like sulfuric acid, H, uh, H2O with H2SO4, or sometimes it's just written H3O+. We could also do uh, oxymercuration, demercuration. And there's our product. I feel like a very long way to get there, but nonetheless, there we are.